Thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly, and to revive the heart of the contrite. Morning has broken, like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken, like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them sing, springing, fresh from the word. Sweet the rain's new fall, sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light, Eden saw play. Praise with elation, praise every morning, God's recreation of the new day. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises. Declare to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come. Let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me, and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O oh, come, let us adore him. The portion of the Psalter to be read for today the Psalms 24 through 26. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the compass of the world and those who dwell therein. For he ha has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers of the deep. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart and who has not set his mind upon vanity nor sworn to deceive his neighbor. 
He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of those who seek him, even of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, your everlasting doors, and the King of, the, of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord, strong and mighty, even the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Psalm 25. Unto you, O Lord, I will lift up my soul. My God, I have put my trust in you. O let me not be ashamed, neither let my enemies triumph over me. For all those who hope in you shall not be ashamed, but those who deal untruly shall be put to confusion. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me forth in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and you has my hope all the day long. Call to remembrance, O Lord, your teacher, your tender mercies, and your loving kindness, which have been from of old. O remember not the sins and offenses of my youth, but according to your mercy, think on me, O Lord, in your goodness. Gracious and righteous is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Those who are meek shall he guide in judgment, and those who are gentle shall he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For, the name, for your name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. Who is the one who fears the Lord? He shall teach him in the way that he, has, he shall choose. He shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the land. The Lord reveals a secret counsel to those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and in misery. The sorrows of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring me out of my troubles. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. Consider my enemies, how many they are, and how they bear a tyrannous hate against me. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I have put my trust in you. Let integrity and righteousness dealing Let integrity and righteous dealing preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Psalm 26 Be my judge, O Lord, for I have walked innocently. My trust has been in the Lord. Therefore I shall not fall. Test me, O Lord, and prove me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your loving kindness is ever before my eyes, and I will walk in your truth. I have not dwelt with evil doers, neither will I have fellowship with the deceitful. I have hated the company of the wicked, and will not sit among the ungodly. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, and so will I go to your altar. that I may lift up the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where you, your honor dwells. O oh, take not away my soul with the sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, whose hands are full of wickedness and their right hand full of bribes. But for me, I will walk innocently. O oh, deliver me and be merciful unto me. My foot stands firm. I will praise the Lord in the congregations. Glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verses 1 through 19, 23 to 25, and verses 32 to 42. Now Samuel died, and all Israel assembled and mourned for him, 
and they buried him in the house at Ramah. Then David rose and went down to the wilderness of Paran, and there was a man in Ma'al, whose business was in Carmel. The man was very rich. He had 3,000 sheep and a 1,000 goats. He was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail. The woman was discerning and beautiful, but the man was harsh and badly behaved. He was a Calebite. David heard in the wilderness that Nabal was shearing his sheep. So David sent ten young men, and David said to the young men, Go up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus you shall greet him. Peace be to you, and peace be to your house, and peace be to all that you have. I hear that you have shearers. Now your shepherds have been with us, and we did them no harm, and they missed nothing all the time they were in Carmel. Ask your young men, and they will tell you. Therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes, for we come on a feast day. Please give whatever you have at, the, at hand to your servants and to your son David. When David's young men came, they said all this to Nabal in the name of David, and then they waited. And Nabal answered David's servants, Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants these days who are breaking away from their masters. Shall I take my bread and my water and my meat that I have killed for my shearers and give it to men who come from where I do not know? So David's young men turned away and came back and told him all this. And David said to his men, Every man strap on his sword. And every man of them strapped on his sword. David also strapped on his sword. And about 400 men went up after David, while 200 remained with the baggage. But one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to greet our master, and he railed at them. Yet the men were very good to us, and we suffered no harm, and we did not miss anything when we were in the fields, as long as we went with them. They were a wall to us, both by night and by day. All the while we were with them, keeping the sheep. Now, therefore, know this, and consider what you should do. For harm is determined against our master and against all his house, and he is such a worthless man that one cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took two hundred loaves and two skins of wine and five sheep already prepared and five says of parched grain, and a hundred clusters of raisins, and two hundred cakes of figs, and laid them on donkeys. And she said to her young men, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she did not tell her husband Nabal. When Abigail saw David, she hurried and got down from the donkey and fell before David on her face and bowed to the ground. She fell at his feet and said, Oh, me al on me alone, my lord, be the guilt. Please let your servant speak in your ears, and hear the words of your servant. Let not my lord regard this worthless fellow Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, your servant, did not see the young men of my lord whom you sent. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. Blessed be your discretion, and blessed be you who have kept me this day from blood guilt and from working salvation with my own hand. For as surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, who has re restrained me from hurting you, unless you had hurried and come to meet me, truly by morning there had not been left in the ball so much as one male. Then David received from her hand what she had brought him. And he said to her, Go up in peace to your house. See, I have obeyed your voice, and I have granted your petition. And Abigail came to Nabal and told, and behold, he was holding a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunk. So she told him nothing at all until the morning light. In the morning, when the wine had gone out of Nabal, his wife told him these things, and his heart died within him, and he became as stone. 
And about ten days later, the Lord struck Nabal, and he died. When David heard that the Nabal was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord who has avenged the insult I received at the hand of Nabal, and has kept back his servant from wrongdoing. The Lord has returned the evil of Nabal on his own head. Then David sent and spoke to Abigail to take her as his wife. When the servants of David came to Abigail at Carmel, they said to her, David has sent us to you to take you to him as his wife. And she rose and bowed her face to the ground and said, Behold, your handmaid is a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hurried and rose and mounted a donkey, and her five young women attended her. She followed the messengers of David and became his wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bring forth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I have proposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from Paul's Epistle to the Romans, chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin, that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin live in it? Do you know, not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have sinned, now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin, and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought, brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, who were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations, for just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time from the things of which you, were, you are now ashamed? For 
the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb of that was slain. For with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, for ever and for evermore. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do any of you know someone named Abigail? I guess that you probably do. That is a name that has remained relatively popular throughout the ages. There are quite a few Abigails or Abbeys around. But I wonder how many of them and their parents realize that the name of a woman that that's the name of a woman in the Bible. And how many of them know the story of Abigail that we just heard a few minutes ago? I'm guessing probably not too many. This morning we turn our attention to the story of Abigail in 1 Samuel 25 to see a wonderful example of godly wisdom. But along the way, there is also something for us to learn from those two men connected to Abigail. This morning, there are three quotations that I would like you to consider that might help you to remember this account. Who do you think you are? Uh, number two, I'll show you. Number three, stop, think, trust. Can you connect the quote with the person? This morning's reading of the account of Abigail was shortly after the prophet Samuel had died. The first king of Israel, a man by the name of Saul, was ruling Israel. Saul's reign had started off pretty well. He certainly looked the part of a king. He was tall, dark, and handsome. But he soon began to drift away from the Lord, more concerned about what others thought of him than about what the Lord wanted for him. Finally, the Lord told Saul that the kin kinship would not continue in his family. Saul's son would not become the next king of Israel. Instead, God had selected a shepherd boy named David to become the next king. Well, Saul wasn't too happy about God's choice. Saul tried to hunt down and kill David at every opportunity he had, even while David continued to serve in Israel's army, defending and protecting the nation of Israel. Even when threatened by Saul, David trusted that the Lord would deal with Saul at his own time and his own way. David patiently waited for the time when Saul would die and he would become the next king of Israel. Now, brothers and sisters, on this occasion, when David was on the run from Saul, David and about 600 of his soldiers ended up in an area called Carmel. It was there that they met a man by the name of Nabal. Nabal was a very wealthy man. How rich? He had a thousand goats and three thousand sheep, which he was shearing in Carmel. While he may have had a lot of money, he didn't have a really good reputation. We are told that he was surely and mean in his dealings. The word for mean indicates that he was unethical. In other words, Nabal was one of the guys that you dealt with only when you had to and you better watch your back when you do. David ran into Nabal's shepherds while living in Carmel, but made sure that he did not take anything that did not belong to him. In fact, David's men went beyond what you might expect. Later in this account, we hear one of Nabal's shepherds say about David's men, these men were very good to us. They did not mistreat us. Night and day they were a wall around us. The whole time, we were, we were shepherding our sheep near them. 
David and his men had gotten to know Nabal's men, and so you can understand why David made the request he did. When the time for shearing Nabal's sheep came, David asked Nabal for some provisions for himself and his soldiers. It was not an unreasonable request at all, especially considering that David had done for Nabal. But Nabal lived up to his reputation and name of fool. Nabal says, Who is this David? Who is the son of Jesse? Many servants are breaking away from their masters these days. Why should I take my bread and water and the meat I have slaughtered for my shearers and give it to men coming from who knows where? In other words, Nabal was saying to David, Who do you think you are? Talking about foolish, arrogant, greedy. How does David respond? We're told, David said to his men, Each of you strap on your sword. He has paid back evil for good. May God deal with David, be it ever so severely, if by morning I leave alive one male of all who belongs to him. Brothers and sisters, I must admit that this seems a little uncharacteristic of David. David had been willing to let Saul live multiple times, even when Saul had tried to kill him. Why? Because David trusted that the Lord would take care of it, and at his own time and his own way. On one occasion, a few chapters before, David said to Saul, May the Lord judge between you and me, and may the Lord avenge the wrongs you have done to me. But my hand will not touch you. But for whatever reason, when it came to Nabal, David was going to take things into his own hands. David was ready to kill Nabal and everyone that belonged to Nabal. David, in essence, was saying, I'll show you. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I can understand David's reaction all too well. Isn't this the natural reaction of our sinful flesh whenever someone hurts us or someone we care about? We get passed over for a promotion at work, and we think about our employer. I'll show you. I'm going to work as I'm not going to work as hard. I might just take a few of these things home with me today for what I should be getting paid. Or maybe someone says something insulting and we think, I'll show you. I just won't happen to see you standing in the hallway anymore or say hello or good morning. I'll show you. You know, brothers and sisters, God looked at us and said, I'll show you, but not in vengeance or retribution, but in love and mercy. In Romans 5, 8, we read, but God demonstrates, shows, his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God shows his love for us at one of the most unlikely and unloving places, at the cross. Jesus willingly sacrifices his life in our place for people who do not love him perfectly or love one another perfectly. There, Jesus demonstrated the loving heart of God, the Father, delivering to us what we could never deserve, what we could never earn. God has rescued us from sin's eternal punishment and reward, and rewarded us with the perfect life through Jesus' payment of our sins. Through faith, we have seen this amazing show of God's love for us. Now, brothers and sisters, Abigail is just the opposite of Nabal. She is described as an intelligent and beautiful woman, when Abigail discovered that her husband had done, she immediately recognized his foolishness and the potentially life-threatening situation he had placed himself in. So what does she do? Abigail acted quickly. She took 200 loaves of bread, two skins of wine, five dressed sheep, five sails of roasted grain, a hundred cakes of raisin, and 200 cakes of pressed figs, and loaded them on donkeys. She goes to meet David, and we're told, she fell at his feet and said, Pardon your servant, my lord, and let me speak to you. Hear what your servant has to say. Please pay no attention, my lord, to what, to that wicked man Nebel. He is just like his name. His name means fool, and folly goes with him. Now just think about that. Abigail is pleading for her husband's life. She knew what he was like. She lived with him. You might expect that she might silently stand by thinking, Finally, 
I'll get rid of my terrible husband. Good riddance. Instead, she shows her love for her husband, even while disagreeing with him. She trusted that the Lord would deal with her husband at his own time and in his own way. But personal vengeance, that was not God's way. But her godly wisdom does not stop there. She continues, Please forgive your servant's presumption. The Lord, your God, will certainly make a lasting dynasty for my Lord because you fight the Lord's battles, and no wrongdoing will be found in you as long as you live. When the Lord has fulfilled for my Lord every good thing he promised concerning him and has appointed him ruler over Israel, my Lord will not have on his conscience the staggering burden of needless bloodshed or of, or of having avenged himself. Abigail recognized that David was God's selection to be the next king of Israel. She also recognized that what David was planning to do was sinful and wrong, done out of personal vengeance. She was saying to David, Stop! Think! Trust! She recognized what David had recognized so many times before, that the Lord would deal with Nabal's sin in this way and at this time. But personal vengeance and needless bloodshed was not the Lord's way. How does David respond? Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me. May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. Go home in peace. David praises Abigail for her wisdom, the wisdom that he has not shown. She recognized the sin of her husband, the potential sin of David's actions, and she humbly addressed them both. What a wonderful example for us to follow and wisdom for us to pray for. A wisdom that recognizes what is right and wrong, the love and humility to confront one another, the faith to trust God's promises, and the patience to wait upon God's plans. Whatever happened to Nabal and Abigail? Well, the Lord dwelt with Nabal at his own time and way. When Abigail told Nabal what she had done, he had a heart attack and died ten days later. And Abigail? She became the wise wife of the next king of Israel, a man by the name of King David. Amen and amen. Let us now profess our faith as it is summarized in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. As our Savior Christ taught us, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to tem into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your grace that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. 
Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your servant Oswald boldness to confess the name of our Savior Jesus Christ before the rulers of this world and courage to die for his faith. Grant that we may always be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us, and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. Infinite thy vast domain. Everlasting is thy reign. Hark the loud celestial hymn. Angels, choirs above are raising. Cherubim and seraphim. In unceasing chorus, praising. Fill the heavens with sweet accord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, lo, the apostolic train join thy sacred name to hollow. Prophets swell the loud refrain, and the white-robed martyrs follow. And from morn till set of sun, through the church the song goes on. Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit, three we name thee. While in essence only one, undivided God we claim thee then adorning, bend the knee, and confess the mystery. Christ, thou art our glorious King, Son of God, enthroned in, enthroned in splendor, but deliverance to bring, thou all honors dis surrender, And wast of a virgin born, humbly on that blessed morn, thou didst take the sting from death, Son of God, as Savior given, on the cross thy dying breath, opened wide the realm of heaven. In the glory of that land, thou art set at God's right hand. As our judge, thou wilt appear, Savior, who hast died to win us. Help thy servants drawing near. Lord, renew our hearts within us. Grant that with thy saints we may, dwelling in, in everlasting day. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, their Son above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, Drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee. Earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, blooming meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou, our Father, Christ, our brother, all who live and love are thine. Teach us how to love each other. Lift us to the joy divine. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, 
We, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And, we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as, we may, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>